Hey folks, Kevin Snyder here. Thanks for tuning in to what I believe is one of the most important videos to really pay attention to because a successful speaker will be prepared for any kind of situation. And now the in-person events are back. They've been coming back for a while, but they are definitely coming back. I'm in uh, an amazing season right now of in-person conferences. I still have a couple virtual, but I'm looking at a, a 42K that's 1,000, 42,000, two-week period of time. I've got four in-person events. I've got a state conference, a regional conference, national conference, and, catch this, a two-day retreat. So when I go to present, oh, and by the way, I don't say that to impress you. I say that to impress upon you the opportunities that we have as speakers to live our dream, to have that platform, to help other people, and to do it in a way, when we get really good at it, we get paid to do it. So... What I want to share with you today is a tip on, on what I bring with me to every single in-person event. Whether I'm speaking at a conference, whether I'm going to be in a ballroom, whether I'm going to be in a school auditorium, whether I'm going to be at a conference center, or some other type of venue, right? There's all sorts of venues that you're going to be asked to speak at. And sometimes um, you just don't know what you might be dealt with, or you ask the right questions. And I, I have a questionnaire right? I have a, a, my coaching clients know this because if you, if you don't have a questionnaire for, for, and this is a little bonus for you. So if you don't have a questionnaire where you ask the right questions, number one, you're not, not going to know how to customize, but more importantly, number two, you're not going to know the kind of environment that's going to set you up for success. So what I have here is a tech bag and I take this with me for every single event, regardless of where I'm speaking. So, um, in about, in about three hours, I'm going to be catching a plane I'm going to be going to Texas, then I'm going to be going to New Orleans, then I'm be coming back home, okay? And I'm doing a big, a big national conference or a regional conference, and I'm also doing um, a two-day retreat with a attorney firm, okay? So I've got a lot of things to be thinking about um, supply-wise for those two different types of venues. One, I'm going to be in a big ballroom. The other one, I'm going to be in a small, a small little conference center room with about 50 attorneys for two days. So let's get right to it. Uh, I want to give you some context and that's why it's important. So I take this bag with me. I, I do not check this bag. So this is my bag for tech, believe it or not. And this is my bag where I've got my laptop and an extra set of clothes and, uh, and shoes. So this is the bag that I'm allowed to take with me. It fits underneath the seat in my plane. And this is the bag that I take with me that I put in the overhead bin. And I never check this, it's always with me. It has probably about $500 roughly of, of, if that, maybe of some tech equipment, but this is the equipment that I need for success, okay? And now it's gonna be really important for us to dive right in to see what's inside of this, okay? So let me show you. All right, we open this baby up. <clears throat> now, already you're like, what? <laughs> This is a 150 foot HDMI cord. It's also a 150 foot audio cord, just in case you need the audio and it's not going through the HDMI, depending on your setup. The only reason you're gonna need this is if you're presenting on a, on a stage in a big room, okay? Now, why is that important? Well, this is what I shared with you in a prior video about how to make sure that you never have to look behind you at your screen. Because a lot of meeting planners, and look, you might even be told, hey, it's going to be one way. And you prepare that way with your mind, but you show up and it's not that way. And that's exactly what happened to me um, not too long ago when I was presenting. And the, the, the screens behind me, they had no confidence monitor in front of me. And I hate that confidence monitor. That's just what they call it. Um, it's, not, it's not confidence for us as speakers, hopefully, right? But... If you do, you want to know what the audience is looking at, especially if you have a clicker and, um, and you click, but it didn't click. Well, you don't know that. And now the audience is looking at a different slide and here you are not looking organized. Well, you have to control that environment. Yes, you can control it. And that's one way of doing it. So watch that other prior video. I'll, I'll try to put a link in the description, but it should also, that video should be in my channel. So it's all about how to not look behind you when presenting, regardless of audience size. So what you do is you run that cord from wherever you be plugged in initially, like at the at the tech booth or, you know, um, 
wherever that, that you'd be plugged in, now you can be plugged in from anywhere and you can put your laptop directly right in front of you so that you can use your laptop as the confidence monitor. So no excuses to look behind you at your screen in the future. And also, if you are one of those people, and look, I am too sometimes, because I always change my content, I'm customizing every single program I do, it is nice to have that monitor right in front of you, just to kind of be a guiding light to make sure that, yeah, I, I, this is the outline of my speech. And especially when you're in presenter view, you get to see what the next slide is. So if you do need your slides, not to present effectively, but just to be a guiding light, that's another reason why you'd want your, your uh, laptop literally right off stage or on a chair right in front of you. And catch this, nobody knows that it's there, right? Nobody knows that it's there except you. You're the only person that can see it. And if you don't have these two cords, you don't have a shot at that. You're gonna be stuck wherever they have you, right? And, and that's gonna look very uh, unprofessional. So, so look, this is all about being professional, folks. All right, so that's it right there. These two cords each, I think, are maybe $30. All right, so 60 bucks right there. Um, all right, this is a, my little mini tech bag. And if I do, and I've, I've had this once or twice where because the, the, fl the plane was full or um, it's a small regional jet, because sometimes I go to these podunk cities, <laughs> a lot of times it's college towns and uh, cornfields in the middle of nowhere. So if it is a small plane, I have to check it. I always take this bag out and then I let them check the rest, okay? But I still know that it's on that plane, right? I don't have to wonder, um, you know, and I'm not gonna be picking it up at baggage claim. No, 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 I'm gonna be picking off right when that plane lands. All right, well, let's have a little bit of fun here. This is my Price is Right. Uh, if you know my, if you ever heard me present, my Price is Right, getting on there was my dream to meet Bob Barker. It's my signature story. It's stand-up comedy with inspiration. And it also ties in my overall message. So that's my Price is Right shirt. I always take that with me. Uh, I take some duct tape. This is white. I'd encourage you to get black. I just ran out of my black, and I'll be sh I'll be stopping to get some black duct tape on the way to the airport. So you always want some black duct tape, just because if you do do these cords, you want to, from a liability standpoint. I almost had this just happen. They told me I couldn't do this because they had to tape down the the cords, and they wouldn't let me do it with the, the cords unless we had black duct tape. Well, guess what I had? Frickin' black duct tape. Although this is white, which is why I use all the black, okay? All right, you're also gonna want two different extensions cord, extension cords. Um, one, just as a backup, I believe this is a 20 foot extension cord. This is if you need to have your laptop plugged in or for other things that you'll see, I have my tech bag like an alarm clock. You always wanna have a clock right in front of you too. But if you, uh, I have one that's battery operated, but one time the battery died. So I was like, okay, I always need to have that plugged in. I usually have it plugged in right by one of the projectors or somewhere. Okay, so I got, I got, I got two of those. Okay, and you also wanna make sure you get the three prong in there. All right, um, here's the other, here's the other, oops, extension cord right there. Some scissors just for who knows what. Um, here's a little prop I use. It's a brick. It ties into one of my stories. Again, and if you've ever seen me present, uh, you know I'm very image-oriented. And this is one way to engage your audiences is you want to make sure that you have tangible items that capture what you're sharing. Um, good slides are great, but if you don't have... And I wouldn't go so far. People would call these props. Technically, they're props, but they're also... Um, ways that I can connect with my audience. And, uh, and I'd encourage you to, to have certain things that you can bring with you in person. I mean, I feel literally if people ask me, hey, can you, can you sign that brick? Can I, can I have that brick? And I, I have several bricks. <laughs> Usually, I, if I can fit them, I take a couple. Um, all right, we've got a tripod in here. I got this at Walmart for maybe 15, 20 bucks. I set this up on the table. And sometimes what I do as well, if I know that I'm going to be in a venue that's going to have a cool audience, I always take two cameras with me. Um, I've got a camera in here, but I've also used my phone right here. So I might have one in the back corner, one in the front shooting into the audience. I usually stop at a Walmart when I get to my destination and I go in there and I buy a seven foot extension or a seven foot uh, tripod. This is a, a 12 inch. So this is more of a table or back of the room, put it on something. Um, but you're gonna want 
a five to six to seven foot, whatever the biggest one they've got. That way you can put it in the back of the room and kind of angle down and get that bigger wide shot. Okay, so you'll stop at a Walmart, get some supplies that you might need, tripods. Um, I don't know what else you might, I'm trying to think of other things I might need. Sometimes I go, actually, I get a basketball because I talk about pivoting as compared to shifting. Shift thinker is my number one keynote. So if I'm talking about kind of like the brick, the tangible, well, I'll have a basketball with me. And I've had people tell me, it's like, it's so cool that you just brought out things that as you were talking, it's almost like you're a carrot top. You know, you're like the prop guy, but it helped us connect with you and engage. So anyways, all right. This video has already turned a little bit longer than I expected because there is so much stuff. So I always take some gum with me too, uh, just because this helps with a little bit of, uh, not one call it anxiety, but when you're chewing gum, you kind of, you know, it, it just helps me a little bit with, with some focus, as simple as that might sound. I always take some books with me. Okay, so I've written a couple books. Uh, Think Differently to Achieve Success is my main one. I usually do a free ebook download in option three if they've paid for it. Uh, that's where I go to Amazon. I do a free book download a day. But I also take some books with me um, to give out to volunteers because that's how you get many times volunteers. Anytime you give out the first book to a volunteer, you can say, and for all of you who are going to be engaged with me today at the max level, you're going to be my volunteers. Catch this. Everyone is going to get an autographed copy of my book. So I appreciate your involvement with today and being engaged. And come see me afterward. If you'd like, I'll sign it and I'll double the value. I usually say that, I get a lot of chuckles, right? But I've got the two copies here are hard book copies. So if you don't have a book, uh, you need one. If you're gonna be a professional speaker, you definitely need one, I can help you with that. I'm a former co-author for Rightway Publishing Company, and I have two hardback versions that I give to my meeting planners. One to the executive, uh, or I might take more, depending on who were the decision makers that brought me in, okay? So you're, you're always gonna want, I always, well, I take, two or three or four hard copy books. I give those to the people who hired me. And then I've got, these are my soft cover books. I usually take about 15 to 20 of these. And these are the ones I give out to my volunteers. Okay, make sense? I always have people that come up to me afterward and also say to me, man, I wanna do what you do. Or how did you get into speaking? You know, because they are interested in it as well. So this is Paid to Speak, which I hope all of you have a copy of. If you don't have a copy of it, you definitely need to get a copy because this walks you through my system, my process for how I started my speaking and how I run my speaking business. So I learned a lot the past 20 years, over a thousand organizations. But what I do is I usually give this to somebody that comes up to me afterward who wants to do what I do. I say, well, if you want to do what I'm, what I'm doing, then do what I've done. Would you like a copy? So I'm, that's how prepared I am, right? And, and then I say to them, and if you read it in the next 30 days and you leave an Amazon review, I'm happy to also honor you with, with a coaching call. We can talk about your speaking. I can answer any questions. How cool is that? Uh, here are some more props for you. Um, if you've ever heard me present, you know I often talk about the fish philosophy, uh, and it's a personal experience that I had up in Seattle, Washington, watching people through a fish and it differentiated their speaking business because they rethought what their product really was. It's a great business example. People love it. I actually have fish with me and I throw fish to my audience, but I can't throw fish to them if I don't have the prop. Um, I also do a little bit of singing in my programs, Don't Stop Believing. Now when I'm actually kind of walking back in with my audiences, I do this to kind of spur, you know, people doing a little keynote karaoke with me. It's a great way that I engage my audiences. And I, when I first started doing it for the when I first did it, I was very uncomfortable, thought it'd be cheesy, didn't think it would work. People love it. I get arms raised with hundreds of people or whoever's in my audience. At just a little cheesy microphone. All right. Well, now, look, we're going to go into the full bag here. So this is actually the full tech bag. All right. So I'm just going to go through a couple of these things really quick. You need to have a battery tester. That way, you want to check your batteries in your clicker, um, your battery, uh, or your alarm clock, anything else. That was my mistake. And, and let me say this too. You may not think you don't need some of these items or anything else I've already shared. If you don't think you need them, there will be a moment that you realize you should have. So most of this I don't use, but I have it as, as backup. And it's like leadership. It's, it might be thought to be easy or common, but common sense ain't common, number one. But number two, you don't need it until you need it, right? Um, when it's most difficult is when it's most required. I have a audio cable 
Sometimes if there are any sound issues or a unique sound setup that you're dealing with, this allows me to have two different extensions, right? And so that's what the AV would be plugged into, would be one of these. Also one's a microphone and it's got the three ring, not the two, and that's key. So you want one with the three ring and just do it. Just don't, don't wonder why, just do it. Make sure you get one with the three ring. Here is a, a test or a battery bank. Um, this usually can give you two or three charges, full charges on your phone. You always wanna make sure you got a full charge on your phone. That could be done really uh, on, the, on the flight. A lot of times they have USB ports on the plane. Um, couplers, oh my God. These are, I take two of these. This is if you do, for some reason, need to do an extension with your, um, with your laptop, with your, with your presentation. This allows you on one end to plug in to their HDMI cord, and then the other HDMI cord, which goes into your laptop, would go into there. So it's called a HDMI coupler. Here's also another HDMI cord that I bring with me. Uh, this is a, just a 25 foot one. But you can see here, same thing. Hey, this goes into my laptop. This gets plugged into their HDMI cord, if it's set up that way. Okay, as you can see, I've never had to use this, but if I needed it, I would be prepared. Uh, this is a Bluetooth speaker. You get so many different ones, versions of these on, uh, on Amazon. By the way, I got almost all this on Amazon. This was, I think, maybe 20 bucks. And especially with smaller groups, like what I'm going to be doing with my firm retreat, I'm going to have, I'm going to have music playing in the background when they're walking in during breaks. And if for some reason, catch this, if for some reason, if I can't get the audio on for my presentation, because I have some videos and some other things, well, guess what? Guess how I'm going to use my audio. So if you've ever hooked up your laptop and, and for some reason you couldn't get the sound to come through, that's your backup. Just Bluetooth it. You can Bluetooth it from your laptop. You can also Bluetooth it from your phone and just play music from your phone, which you can also control with your phone. So have a Bluetooth speaker. They're very cheap. Um, this is an external hard drive, 50 bucks Office Depot. You can get these off Amazon, whatever. I've had this for, for two or three years. This has my presentation on it. It also has my raw files, like my graphic files and things like that, just in case I have a code three issue and I gotta start from scratch, which I've had happen, where literally I've, I've lost my entire presentation. Well, this is the backup. I also send my presentation to myself um, via email. I send my presentation, I upload my presentation to the Google Drive, and I also have it on a USB stick. So I've got four different backups to my presentation just in case. All right, here is, I love this thing, 10 bucks on Amazon. It's got a USB, you plug into it, and catch this. It extends like 10 feet. <laughs> people at airports, people sitting next to me on a plane, when they see that, they're like, dude, you mind if I plug in? And, um, you know, before before I was married, uh, let's just say maybe, maybe one or two times I, I got a dinner out of that. Um, but it's got two of the iPhone lightning connections and then it's got one USB-C and then this is the other standard charge. So you got four different types of connections in, or three different types of connections in there, two of which are the lightning. But I love that thing. Um, let's see, what else we got here? We got, I believe this is just another standard HDMI cord. Yep, this is a 15 foot standard HDMI cord. All right, the other one was a male, female. This one's two male. Male is the one with the thing pointing out, right, by design. Um, this is really cool, too. Um, this is, I plug this in. Let's say that you've got, this is, comes in handy at the airport, but also comes in handy um, on site where, hey, all you have is one outlet, right? Well, you got a couple things you might need to have plugged in. Well, guess what I've got? This has got six different outlets, and it's got two USBs and a USB-C built in. I believe this thing was $7. Love it. It's come in handy multiple times, right? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this in just a second, so I'm going to keep that out. Um, here's one of my clickers. It's got a little U, uh, USB insert right here. I always carry two of these, so there's another one. Yep, here's the other one right here. So I got two of them. 
By the way, if they have their own clicker, um, unless they demand that you use it, uh, don't. Um, I always use my clicker. I'm comfortable with it. It also allows me, catch this, I can control the sound on it. So if I wanna have the sound go up or down, like say that you know I've got music playing on some of my slides, then if I want my, my music to uh, stop, because I'm about ready to get introduced or there's an announcement or something, I can just go down on my slide so there's not this abrupt kind of halt. Or I know my Jeopardy music and when I'm doing my nine dots activity with my presentations, that sound comes out a little bit louder than my Don't Stop Believe In. So what I do is I lower that with this clicker. So that's, that's one way I do it. Um, here's another coupler. Okay, I mentioned a coupler a few moments ago. That's another coupler. I've got also some batteries, some, some AA and some, some AAA. Okay, just, just backups. You'll need these at some point. Um, cool. All right. Let's say that, because we're, we're getting into a more tech age here. Let's say that they, and you need to know their setup, by the way. Part of my questionnaire and part of my pre-event touch point call. I always, have, I always do both. Whether I'm speaking for free or fee, I always require them to send me a questionnaire. Um, and I also do a contract. That's a little bonus for you too today. I always do a contract, even if there's no fee exchange. I want to make sure we're clear on expectations. And part of that is my setup. Part of that's also my um, recording and or videography. I agree or don't agree to that. So catch this. Look, this is the HDMI that I plug an HDMI into, um, or this would be the USB-C. So you got both here. And for those of you that are a Mac, your Mac people, um, a lot of folks are using USB-Cs instead of HDMI. So if you plug that into your computer, now you've got to plug into their HDMI. So it kind of goes both ways. All right. Um, here is, a, 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 I guess they call this, um, <laughs> what is this called? It's a hub. Yeah, it's a hub and it's got everything in it. So look, you plug that USB-C and they may, I have one of these two for US, USBs, but you can plug this into your computer and then look, you have access to all these ports. You've got some uh, USB 3.0, USB 2.0, you have a, a USB-C here, an HDMI here, and even an Ethernet, right? And then you've also got HDMI, two HDMIs and a card reader for memory cards. Um, the reason that this is awesome is just got, you got all that in one. You don't have to use but one of them, but you got all of these different plugins if needed. Um, I'm gonna talk about this Ethernet input in just a second. And that's also what this is. That's an Ethernet. It's already built into this. All right, and this is gonna help you if you need internet during your presentation, which I do not recommend that you do. Don't rely on, e on internet. Even if you test it, well, I'll just go right into it. Let me explain why. You might be good in the sound check, but what happens when you throw 100 bodies in the room and everybody's on the Wi-Fi or 500 people, right? What sound check doesn't mean if things are going to work when, when the bodies are full. So, number one, never use, never rely on internet or Wi-Fi. Well, number one, never, never use internet. You want to embed it in your presentation. And if you don't know how to do that, if you need something from the internet and you don't know how to embed it in your presentation, then you and I need to set up a coaching call. That's an easy fix. I can explain how. Because I've seen speakers try to go on the internet and it's just like, seriously, dude? Like, 1990 called. Um, so you don't want to do that. But let's just say for some reason you had to get on the internet. Maybe you have an issue and you got to download your presentation or you got to do something on the internet. Well, or let's just say the Wi-Fi is not working. Uh, that just happened to me. The Wi-Fi wasn't working. Well, you know why? Because everybody's freaking on it. You know, sometimes with this in-person stuff coming back, guess what? We're, we're, we're you know, some, some events and uh, AV folks are a little rusty. So this allows you to plug your USB Ethernet or plug it into your computer with an ES, a USB and then the Ethernet cord plugs into this. So that would assume that where your event is has an Ethernet output. And what I take with me, I, just, I don't take this with me now, but if, if, if you have to have Ethernet, I, although I encourage you not, if you have to, then get one of these. This is a 100-foot Ethernet cord. 100 foot of ethernet and that little thing right there plugs into ah, 
there it is, that adapter. So that would be how you get landline internet. Think about that. Um, it's also something for if you're presenting from home and you're relying on Wi-Fi, which you should never do. Never, ever, 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 even with virtual events, rely on the Wi-Fi. If you're relying on Wi-Fi, it's okay to do it for a meeting or um, for something else, but never during the presentation. You want to be landlined. That's how you do that. And you can plug in directly from your modem or your router to do that. Now, let's say you're like, hey, well, I'm at, I'm at a ballroom and for some reason it's like, like 300 feet away. I mean, good. You're a football field. You're doing a big event. Well, you can, I actually have two of these, right, where I could extend them with this little extender right here. That's an Ethernet. It's kind of like a coupler with the HDMI. You plug one into that, the other one into that. Now you got an extra 100-foot cord. And you could do it again if you want to need 300 or 400. But the point is you need to know your room set up prior to getting there. And also what I do is I make sure I know my room set up immediately when I arrive. And I get there as early as possible. If I'm doing a morning keynote, I'm getting there the night before, right? And then I'm going to do a visual. I'm going to check it. And if I often will need to then modify my presentation somehow to, to make a small change last minute. And, and that's based on what I'm actually dealing with, right? Um, let's see what else I got here. All right, I've got, this is my USB little external memory card. Um, I got a bunch of Sharpies for my autographs. I've got this right here too. This is plugs into my phone with an audio jack. Okay, you might want to get one of those. Here's my gym card. <laughs> There's my gym card. And uh, here's my battery. Or I'm sorry, here is my alarm clock. And you definitely want to have one of these. Card rule for speaking is you end on freaking time, right? Especially if you're speaking, I mean, for any event. But if you're at a conference and you go late, it is better to end early than to go late. But you need to know where you're at. And it doesn't matter what you think, and you don't want to be looking at your watch. What you want is a clock, somewhere where you can see it and nobody else can. Uh, in fact, you might want two. All right, well, that's my tech, folks. And like I said, all the tech goes back into here. It all was nice, as you saw, and I carried it all with me. Um, you might wonder, well, what else do I take? Well, everything else I take is, is kind of just for me personally. I've got a bag that goes underneath. That's what I have my laptop in. I probably have a book or two with some notes. Um, I also have an extra pair of shoes. You know, if I'm doing two presentations or frankly, I always travel in what I'm presenting on. That way, if I had to check a bag for some reason and they lost my clothes, I wouldn't be losing my, my, my attire. Um, and then I always take a pair of jeans and a pair of slacks. This is kind of bonus. Um, that way, if I need to dress up or dress down a little bit based on my audience, I'm prepared to do either way. And the shoes kind of mirror that as well. I always... This is my favorite. This is probably, if you see me present, you probably see me present in this outfit um, nine times out of ten. I love the pink and the blue. It matches my coat. Got my little pocket square. I rarely wear a tie, but the pocket square makes it add on a little level. I've also got a vest. If I do wear the vest, I'm not wearing the suit, and I'm wearing this shirt probably with the arms rolled up a little bit with the jeans. And that makes me kind of get that, you know, that little down look. Um, that depends on the audience. So you want to match. You want to be one step above your audience, but you want, don't want to be too, too, too many steps because then you're unrelatable. Um, they will make an impression about that. Um, and I do a lot of college and high school speaking and other just events where, like the firm retreat, um, I'm probably going to wear the slacks and the coat the first day on day two. I'm probably going to wear a different shirt, but with the vest... And it depends. I'm not sure yet if I'll, I'm going to wait and kind of gauge them to see if I'll probably jeans the second day. So, look, there's a lot to this. Don't let this overwhelm you or intimidate you. If you're still watching this, then then um, if you do feel like, what, that's a lot of shit. <laughs> okay, well, I just outlined it for you. You're welcome. And if you want to schedule a coaching call to talk about some of this with me or you want to dive deeper in any of these things, or, or frankly, you want to get serious about your speaking, you want to learn how to get paid engagements, learn what it takes to set up a business in it, whether it's part-time or full-time. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. So I'd encourage you to get my book, Paid to Speak, and hopefully we can have a conversation one day. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.